Welcome to Trading Lounge and the European indices. I'd like to start with the S&P 500 here. With the S&P 500 here, much the same as the Russell, is that we've been looking for uh, wave four to pull back and uh, into this box here, which it's done. We're expecting it to move up here now. So we've got wave one and wave two into play here. And what we're looking for is a move up here. Now we've got that move up back up here. Now this move up here would be confirmed if the um, the, the 2430 here, which is subgroup one, the top of subgroup one, if that 30 became the support, then that um, confirms that we'll be moving higher from that point. Okay, so that's something to, to, uh, to, to watch. Um, so uh, I'll just drill in here a little bit, maybe on the hourly chart, just to sort of show you what we're looking at here. So from this wave four low here, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five for wave one, and eight, well, an A and a B and a C for wave two here. And this move up here is only three waves so far. So we've got one, two, and three here. Um, I'm looking for the wave four to pull back, which it's doing now, and then the wave five to pull up. If I get those five waves here, yeah, so that's basically a move above the 2430, it doesn't mean you chase that, but what it does do is it actually confirms that we've got five waves up there. And then we're looking for um, an A and a B and a C back again. And if we do get this A, B, C back again here, then we'll look to go long um, you know, above any of these highs at that point there. That will be the trigger here. So I'm thinking that that could be like Friday before that kicks in. I think this pullback here, ABC here, could take on Thursday and then um, th late Thursday trading and Friday moving up through here. So if you see that moving up through here, then it's likely that the uh, the European indices are going to follow into this sequence here because we'll be looking at um, wave one, wave two, wave one, wave two, wave one, wave two. So it'll be a third of a third of a third. So it'll move quite quickly. So we're kind of expecting the European markets to move lower at this point where we're going to see the DAX move higher. Uh, sorry, the S&P move higher. And it is possible for the S&P to go one way and the DAX to do nothing um, and just get sluggish and, and catch up later on when it's finished. Um, but I just want to point that out first, you know. This, going into Europe now, this is the uh, German mid-cap here. <coughs> and I'm using this because it, it kind of gave a clearer pattern on everything. And, um, yeah, so I thought it was always quite sort of valuable because we, we basically you know, came very close to picking the high here and then getting the turn and working through all of this. So it is a bit of a, um, you know, a bit of a central sort of theme through through the European markets. But this one was just a little bit cleaner and I can see the count a bit clearer. So um, as it stands at the moment, we've got this A wave here, A, B, C for the B wave and one, two, three, four and five down here for C wave. Now that could be the end of it. This market could actually just continue to move up here. But I wouldn't turn bullish on the European markets or at least this market unless we had support on this number here which is a medium level across here at 25. Now from that high there to this low here, this box is the 50 and the 61.8% retracement level. So that gives it another sort of layer of resistance in a sense. So, you know, if that ever became the support, well, then we would need to turn bullish uh, at that stage. But as we see it at this, uh, in this juncture here, um, even though that sort of dropped off here, we're looking, we've got a five wave structure up here, then we've got a corrective pattern to the 50, 60% mark. So because we've got five here, then we'd be looking for another five over here. This is the wave four of one lesser degree. So it's possible we could count this as one and two and three, A, B, C for the fourth wave here, and then down for this fifth wave here. So that's possible. It's also possible that it can be the B wave here. And it's also possible that it could just be up for one and back for two, then up for one and back, for, well, up up for one and back for two and then keep building here. But I can't turn bullish unless we're on here. As I see it at the moment uh, with these markets is that we'll have one more push up here 
and then we'll be moving down, which is the opposite of what we'll be seeing with the, the S&P 500. So I'm, I'm probably wrong in one instance, you know. Um, so I don't really see any sort of uh, uh, trades, uh, trends actually in the uh, European uh, market. So this picture here with this move going across here, um, I've got it there because it's got one and two and three and A, B, C for four and then up for five here. So it's kind of, um, you know, it, it's kind of, I don't know, I mean, I can understand it where when we come across to, say, the DAX here on this market here, um, we've got, uh, yeah, so uh, there's, there's some parts of the structure that, that count okay. We can count five waves down here. We can get an ABC here for wave two here. We could even put this over to here, but um, it doesn't really matter. We've got nice five wave, reasonable five waves in this structure, not a problem. Wave two here. We've got one and two and three and four and we could have wave three sitting over here. We could also have wave three sitting here as well. Um, but it still leaves us with this particular pattern coming across here. And when I look at um, France and the Netherlands and the UK and so on, this always turns out to be an ABC pattern in here. So that's why we've been tracking it as an A wave and a B wave and a C wave. It's very long and sideways drawn, isn't it, for um, you know, for a wave two compared to the wave four compared to this wave two, two here or even or even this one. So yeah, um, I also expect that this little pattern, this first of all, um, the 38.2% retracement level, this here comes in at the 12.5 here roughly just above it and it's already been above it. But I do see that on an intraday basis, we've got one more move up here to, to finish this here. So I can put that up here. And I'll, I'll explain that in a moment on the tick chart here. So it's possible that this can do, have this five wave structure up to this point here and then fail back down through to here. We have to be a little bit mindful in shorting it just in case in some way or another um, that I've made a mistake. I, you know, I don't think so. I mean, the other possibility for this is we've got the A, the B and the C wave into here. And we've got that here and that goes into here and we've got the C wave here and that's the end of it. And then we look at this as being uh, wave one here and then back for wave two here, because if the S&P is going to go high, then we need to look at that. Um, so I think that we just wait for this to move up here and we'll look at that in a moment, this to move up here and then we'll observe what happens here on the Thursday um, and uh, the late later Thursday here. See if we can see, if we can see, identify this as a corrective pattern, then we can look for this to, um, you know, to pull back 50, 60% from here to wherever this high is back to here uh, and then move up from that point. Uh, so we, we'll, we'll need to, to, to look at that. But um, uh, as it stands at the moment, we can leave uh, wave four where it is here until basically until proven otherwise, really, you know. So I'll put that back up there, that there, that over there, that here, that here, that uh, here. It's high on the cash market. So it basically looks like that. Um, yeah, on the tick chart here, if I can just go into this structure here. <coughs> I can see that on this tick chart <coughs> here that we've got um, we've got this this move from the twelve five here. This is one hundred ticks. Um, I can see we've got wave one up here. So this would all be the C wave coming up here for that wave four. Okay, that C of wave four that we're talking about. So a couple of things here is I can see we've got wave one up here, wave two here. And then looking at this is one and two and three and four and five up here for wave three, an A and a B and a C for wave four, pulling back to the wave four for one lesser degree. And then looking for uh, five waves, um, I can't draw on the tick chart here, but one and two and three and four and five to make another high into this sort of area here before moving down here. So I think that we need to be very careful about looking for the five waves here. And once we get up here and we can see what this is here, then we're either going to go bear, we're going to go bearish from that point anyway, in both ways. But in, in one way or another, um, if I just uh, take a few more ticks here, just bear with me a second. 
So from this low here up to wherever this high is up here, you can find that for yourself here, um, then the 50-60% retracement level will be, I've got this upside down, I don't know what's happened to this indicator, it's just sort of switched around, a little bit annoying, but um, I can still just use the 50% and 38.2, which is really the 61.8% anyway, so uh, that low there. So it's possible for this market to move up, make a new high here, and then come back and test either 12.4 or, or 12.450. But I'm interested very much to have a look at that particular pattern that comes down here, because I want to see if it's in three waves like this, um, or it's going to be impulsive coming to, down to this point. If it reaches this point here in three waves, then we know that we've got a bullish market, we can look to go along at that point. Um, if it's five waves down to this point here, then we need to look at the bearish side. So five waves down here would give us three waves back as a retest, and then down again. So we would look at that. Um, that's where that is there. So the other markets are pretty much the same as well. Um, when we look at uh, the Netherlands here, just on a four hour chart here, we've got the same thing here again as well. Um, so I'm still looking for one more little high up here, but um, if for any reason that this 510 here becomes the retested resistance, okay, then you need to start looking to shorting it from that point. Okay, so that 510 is a bit of a line in the sand and we think there's one more to move up here uh, and then move down from this point. There's no, you know, this is a downtrend, isn't it? We don't really have any evidence that it's finished yet. When it gets to this point here, which is the 38.2% retracement level roughly for the way four here, then we've got one reason. And then the second reason is that we can expect to bounce off this 500 as well after we get these little five waves down here. Um, I know that this can be counted, uh, this structure, part of this structure here can also be counted differently as well, um, but I'm not too concerned about that because it still leaves us with um, with this either B wave or wave two in place here because we could have, a, as an example, down for one, two, three here, uh, an A and a B and a C for wave four and then down for wave five. So it's quite possible that we can put this here as wave A or wave one here, then an A and a B and a C here for wave, doesn't matter. We still end up here for, for this. So um, whoever's got a different count here can be right as well. Um, yeah, but what I do find sort of interesting is, is that um, this structure from this point here has got one and two and then one, and two, and I've got it here as, as wave three uh, here. Um, this is interesting because this is, when you look at this on the cash market, this is the low here, not this one here. And in fact, this, this move down through here is the extra wave here because this one here is actually lower than this one here. So that wave three needs to go under, under there, but not that it matters at this, at this point, it still does the same job. Um, but this one is lower than this one on the cash, and this one here is lower than this one on the cash as well. Um, but it's still got three waves here, um, so I can't I can't put I can't put this as wave four here and wave five uh, here like you probably could do on the cash market. Then looking for this as being wave one up here, ABC for wave two, and then up. If that occurs, we'll look at we'll look at that and um, and take it from there. But we have to stay with the trend until proven otherwise. Um, France is much the same as well. So when we look at uh, France, is a little bit weaker in the last session. So um, with this move here of the A, the B, and the C up here, you can see that this move down through here is, has really come down a lot here. So we would still be expecting uh, one more move up before we get this down here. But it's quite possible that um, that uh, this could be counted differently in here as well. It's just a little bit sort of uh, messy. But whichever way we look at, we still get this B wave here. So we should get the, we should get another one up here. And this has got an this is wave one, two, and three here. Wave four's overlapped it like a lot here, which really leaves this here as as um, a little A, B, and C wave to this point here. So you could probably short this if this low gets taken out here. That would be a short there. So the count's a little bit warped, 
but I need to bring it into line with all the other markets, even though it is a little bit warped. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. But you can, if this number here becomes the retest and resistance, you can short that. And the UK market too is in the same pattern, uh, same but different. Um, and in that, uh, this this instance uh, here, we've got um, this 7.3 as a, as a support here, but um, yeah, this is all sort of messy as well here. So uh, until this is the resistance here at seven four here, so going long anywhere in in on these lows here <coughs> is dangerous at this particular point. It can have a it finished here as an A wave and a B wave here, and then one and two and a bit complicated in here, but wave three here. And we've got an A and a B and a C here for wave four. It didn't finish our five waves up here by the by. Um, so I'm a little bit unsure about that, but the sharp move down here will have to make me acknowledge it as as, as a wave five here. So, um, you know, we could be finished uh, here. Uh, let me just have a little look here about this move up here. It's probably just following the S&P 500 up. I'll have a look on the cash market while I'm here as well. Yes, so very much the same as the uh, US market. So we can get five waves out of here comfortably and this here's okay. Um, I need to break that down a little bit further in now. Just drop that into 20 ticks here. Okay, so I've got my five there, got my pullback. So I've got, so this is one and two here. This is the third wave up coming here. So it's in, it's, it's still got higher to go. Um, Yeah, let's just watch it. It's likely to come back and sit on the, the midpoint here, the 7350 here before sort of moving up further. Um, it's following the S&P, that's the main thing. So whatever the S&P 500 is going to do, then this market's going to do uh, the same as well uh, here. Um, but this 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 is the high here. So I need to just check on the cash market. No, we have to take that as the high here. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Let's let's just it's following the S&P. So whatever the S&P is doing, this is going to do the same uh, at this point here. Um, but coming back to the uh, four-hour chart here, if that's where we were here, no, we weren't there. This one here, the hourly chart. So um, yeah, I don't have a clean five-wave structure up here yet. If we get this as I can see, we've possibly got this as wave one and two here but it can be just an ABC correction and still suffer here. We'd still need to see three, four, and five here. Then we'd look for the ABC here, uh, and then we can look to go up from that point, you know, coming through here. I, this, this is a strong downtrend in, in its own way. It's got a lot of weight behind it. Um, there is no evidence of, um, of, a f of the first impulse wave to the upside uh, here just yet. If this comes back and tests on the 7350, then you can use um, the current high there. But it is following the S&P 500, and the S&P 500 is expected uh, higher, um, and so is the DAX on that um, on that tick chart as well. So we can expect higher ground. So definitely the, the trades are on the long side. That's what I can say. For how long, I'm not sure. That's the problem. Alrighty, cheers.